Okay, welcome to this short intro of the Boosted Cloth Builder. The Cloth Builder is an add-on which allows you to simulate cloth and sort of control it during simulation. And it also has some cloth assets that you can use. So, first I'm going to select the plane, go to Object Settings, add a cloth to selected. It's going to show a wireframe. And I'm going to add a collision modifier to the sphere here. If I run simulation, we can see the cloth works, but there's not uh, a lot of polygons here. So I am going to add a subdivision surface and move that before the cloth. So the cloth gets more uh, detail. And as you can see, we are in the middle, uh, middle of our simulation and we change our topology. So the mesh is all messed up means we need to reset the simulation to the first frame again. And if we run it, it looks a lot more detailed. However, we need to enable some self-collision, reset it. Yeah, so we don't get self-intersection. Let's have a look at pinning. So pinning is a way of controlling the mesh as you simulate. I'm gonna select some vertices, add a pin, add a pin, pin, pin. As I run the simulation, I can move these locators or pins around to change the shape. And up here, we also have different settings for the cloth modifier. So we can uh, uh, lower this value, or sorry, increase it, and then we will shrink the cloth. And we can also make it bigger by setting it to a negative value like this. We can add pressure if we enable pressure, looks like that. And uh, we have bending stiffness. So we would go to from like a very bendable cloth to something that is a bit more stiff, as you can see here with these folds. Nice. Once I'm happy with this shape, I can remove the pins and then go to shape and apply base. This will uh, apply the subdivision modifier and sort of make sure that the model itself will be shaped like this. Apply base and this is how it looks now from the start. The uh, add-on also comes with um, an asset browser. So here I'm going to add a uh, collision object and um, some pants. And I can close this again. Now, if I simulate this, it's going to sort of like bunch up with the wrinkles and everything. Because this mesh is uh, set up in a way so that it has a shrinkage along this edge. So that means that the mesh will sort of pull together and create these uh, wrinkles. Each cloth object is created with a bunch of different vertex groups that you can paint either normally or you can use the um, utility here, uh, paint cloth weight. So here we can see um, this is the pin vertices that doesn't simulate the stiffness shrinking and uh, pressure so that is always uh, one and um, yeah can be uh, activated up here so that's it for the short introduction okay let's get a bit more in depth so when you have um, cloth objects i'm gonna make this a collision i'm gonna make this a cloth I'm going to duplicate this. So normally you have a huge set of different settings here in the cloth modifier. So here I have some global settings and quality uh, in terms of uh, simulation quality can be set per each um, cloth modifier. So this one has four, this one has one, but it becomes a bit unmanageable to have those all of the time like managing each modifier so it can be nice to just like change something here 
and then it's changed on each cloth modifier in the entire scene. Uh, but if you want to use um, per modifier settings, you can just deactivate the global settings here. Okay. Um, each object has um, these object settings that we're going to have a look at. It's going to um, make sure as well. Okay, so when you create a cloth modifier, the object that has that modifier also get these vertex groups, pin, stiffness, shrinking, and pressure, which means that you can paint these values. Either you can use just weight painting, uh, or you can use this operator here, paint cloth weights, and I'm going to add it to my quick favorites. So paint cloth weight. And here I can change um, which weight I want to paint. So I'm going to paint a little pinning here. And then I'm going to simulate. Cool. So let's see what we have. We also have uh, stiffness. If I paint a lot of stiffness on this side, we can see that we have two bending stiffness, the minimum and the maximum. The minimum has a value of 0 0.5, which represent, represents this area, the blue stuff. And I can change this to something really high, like 20. So this means that the stiffness of this red area will be of value 20. So if I run this, you can sort of see that uh, this area is more prone to like bending and stuff and this side not so much. Let's paint shrinking. So I can paint shrinking over here perhaps. Run this, you can see how it shrinks up. So shrinking factor max represent, represents the red value on the uh, vertex weight. So I can set that to zero, then it's just like a normal simulation. And if I increase this, we can see how those edges shrinks. What do we have more? We have pressure. So pressure is set to one per default so that it's easy to, you know, use pressure and yeah, just go ahead and do that. So I can do something like this and then I can actually remove some pressure on this side so we can see how that looks. Okay, cool. So that's good to know how that works. So pinning is a way of um, controlling your simulation while the simulation happens. So I'm going to select some vertices, add a pin, select some vertices, and this side I'm going to change the pin shape to a sphere and um, here you can I can change the shape or the scale rather yeah and if I want to change the scale afterwards I can do that over here like that and run the simulation then I can control these pins if I want to remove a pin I just need to select it and click remove pin then the simulation resets cool let's say I have a bunch of pins here like that it can um, remove the pins in the scene, removes everything, or I can remove uh, the pins based on my mesh selection. selection. So every pin that affects this mesh will be removed. Another thing is uh, you might want to move these out for some reason so you can select them easier. I don't know. And that is not their original. Uh, position. So this means that you can select them and say reset pins and this will be their new base location. If I want to <clears throat> sort of keep this shape when I reset the simulation, I can go to this shape section and we can see that this object does not have a subdivision modifier. But if it had, it would be uh, applied to the mesh before uh, applying the shape. If I press apply base, it will remodel the vertices to 
look like that shape from frame at, uh, sorry, one. And if I want to, let's see, I want to save this as a shape, I can save this as a shape key. I'm going to reset the simulation. And now this is stored as a shape key or blend shape as it's called in other application. Now let's say we have a multi-resolution modifier. As you can see on this object, I don't have a subdivision modifier, but a multi-resolution modifier. If I want to keep this on the multi-resolution uh, multi modifier, I can press this reshape multi-res. Now if I go to the first frame, this is the shape on the multi-resolution modifier. So it's sort of the same thing as pressing the uh, reshape button. Okay, let's look at the utility section. So um, this add-on comes with an asset browser, which loads either the first time you press run sim or use open asset browser. Press this, opens up a window. So we have some uh, collision meshes. Gonna pull in this uh, mail one, zero it out. Then we have some garments. I'm gonna choose this um, these pants. So when I press run simulation, they bunch up since they have some shrinkage painted in on them. Rig uh, this <laughs> collision modifier is uh, collision object is also rigged, so I can actually move things around as we simulate. I'll select this leg. Move that not too fast because then we get intersection issues. Okay, cool. So we can actually look at this um, geometry nodes modifier. So the actual mesh looks like this. But then we have the multi resolution modifier. Uh, the cloth, and then the post sim cloth geometry nodes does uh, add some subdivision, and it also separates. Um, it it basically turns hard edges into seams. So here we can separate seams, so we get more of a gap. And if I put this to zero, it just doesn't separate it. I'm gonna have a little bit, tiny bit, like that. And thickness is basically the thickness of the clothes. I'm gonna use minus, so it sort of like extrudes inwards. Whoops, it's a bit too high. We have supportive loops. <clears throat> that is mostly, we have to set separate seams pretty high. And then we can see here that we get some supportive loops. We set that zero. Um, so this object, this object has some, um, interesting weights, like stuff that marks where the belt holders should go, where the pockets are, um, where the visible inner pockets are, or the inner pockets. And all of this is fed into this geometry nodes setup. So you can see here, when we activate it, that we get these uh, pockets on the back side. So pockets top move out is actually how much we move out the top of these pockets. And then there's link to the belt holder object that is instance on those edges. Uh, we can also set the subdivision level post simulation 
And uh, we can also choose if this should UV unwrap the model or not. So I have this uh, weird um, leg sock and I want to fit it to the body. So I'm going to select the sock, select the body, then uh, fit to active. That looks good. We don't have a clot object on it yet. Clot modifier, I mean. Now it starts to do that. And we can use also the paint cloth weight operator to paint some pinning weights on it. We can even increase the, um, the folds here by selecting, and then we can actually go to shrinking and assign a shrink. Oops, that's a bit too much. I think we're going to set it to 0 0.1. Simulate again. Yeah, now we get more folds and stuff. The shake cloth operator uh, can help you if you feel that you get too much of a symmetrical like wrinkle situation. Press shake cloth and this will let the simulation run for a couple of frames and shrink the mesh and then expand it back again. So you can see here that we got some more interesting wrinkles, I guess. It ran for 20 frames and the shrink amount was 0 0.07. If I want to save this simulation, I can actually make a duplicate by pressing this button. And then I can choose if I want to apply any geometry nodes modifiers or apply um, multi-resolution modifiers as well. So this is nice. I can keep these. And down here, you have a link to the YouTube video tutorial. And that is it for the cloth builder.